This part of the test will measure your speaking ability. It will last around 20 to 30 minutes. You will answer four questions. The first question will be about a familiar topic. The other three will be about short conversations, lectures, and reading passages. You can read and hear the lectures and paragraphs only once. You will see the time available for preparing the responses as well as the time to give your response on the bottom side of the screen. You have to stay within those time limits. Speaking Task 1 You will be asked a question about a familiar topic. You will then have 15 seconds to prepare your response, and 45 seconds to speak. Many people think that using the public transportation is the best option, but others find that cars are more convenient. Which do you prefer, and why? Include examples and details in your response. Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. Well, immediately I would like to say that I would prefer the public transportation. The reason why is because uh, it's better for your budget and it's also better for the environment. I mean, the cars are more flexible, but you know, it's kind of expensive to maintain it, to pay for gas and all of that. And uh, since I'm somebody who cares about my budget, uh, since I care about the finances, I would choose the public transportation every time. Because again, with it, you can save money. And also, you kind of, your conscience is, uh, is clear because uh, you've uh, helped the environment by taking the public transportation instead of uh, the car. Speaking task two. You will read a short paragraph and then listen to a conversation between two people. You will have 50 seconds to read the paragraph. After, you will get a question about what you read and heard. You will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it. You have 50 seconds to read. Start reading after the beep. Now listen to the conversation between two people. What do you think about this new change? It is horrible. I don't know what they were thinking when they made this change. Why do you feel so negative about it? First of all, it will be tougher. The essays allowed us to have far more flexibility with the grades. I mean, it is much easier to get more points on the essays rather than on the exam. It was also easier to get extra credit that way. Now with this change, that is no longer a possibility. Yeah, I guess you are right. But don't you think it will give you more time? That now we only need to focus on the tests? You mean, now we get to be stressed about the tests? Like I said, you had more options before. Now that we know it's all about the tests, we will be anxious about it. Okay, but still, the tests can't be that bad. They can be difficult. The professor likes to put a lot of difficult questions. You really need to learn every detail from the textbook to know that you will get a good grade. I didn't know that. 
I also take issue with what they said about the essays being useless. That is simply not true. We get a lot from essays and presentations. If you really want to get deep into a specific subject, they are the best way to go. You really get to the core that way, and it makes the students invested when you make them research and present something. If there are so many positives to the old way, why change this now? I think it's pure laziness. The professor doesn't want to waste time with grading the essays. It is much easier to just grade the exams, so there will not be that much work. What does the male student think about the new grading system? Include the details he mentions. Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. Well, he's extremely negative about it. He thinks it's horrible. Um, he thinks that uh, this new grading system doesn't give them uh, flexibility. Basically, that they lose flexibility. And also, he thinks that uh, the tests which they will now have to do, they are really hard and it's really uh, stressful to only think about the uh, tests. Um, and he also uh, thinks that uh, with the essays, they actually learned more with the previous grading system, that with the essays, not only did they have more flexibility, but basically you learn more that way, that it makes students more invested in the topic. And he also states that it's his opinion that the professors, that the professor is uh, really lazy and that it's just easier for him to grade the exam instead of to instead of reading the essays that uh, they will write speaking task three you will read a short paragraph about an academic topic then listen to a lecture about it you will have 50 seconds to read the paragraph after you will get a question about what you read and heard. You will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it. You have 50 seconds to read. Start reading after the beep. Now listen to the lecture. When they say that a species is adapting, we mean that it is changing its behavior, body, or both. There is a plethora of species currently living on Earth, and they can be found in all corners of this blue planet. The animal and plant adaptations depend completely on the type of environment they are found in. The Earth has many natural habitats that are spread across large surfaces we can distinguish three types of adaptations. Number one, the structural adaptations. Basically, here we are talking about the skin, color, and shape of the organism. These adaptations help it survive in its habitat. The beak of a woodpecker is a good example. It became stronger over time to allow this bird to carve out its own home. 
Next are the physiological adaptations. These are the biological mechanisms that are developed over time. For example, the snake's ability to produce venom or the mammal's ability to secrete milk for their young. And lastly, we have the behavioral adaptations. Just like it says, it is about the change in the behavior that helps a creature survive. A great example of this is taking care of the young. Some reptiles just lay as many eggs as possible in the hope that some of them will survive predators, but good parenting has proven to be the best way to secure the offspring's entrance into the world. What types of adaptations does the professor mention? Use points and examples from the lecture. Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. The professor talks about three types of adaptations, structural, uh, physiological, and behavioral. Structural are uh, when uh, basically the organism changes skin, color, or, or shape. And it, uh, this happens so it could better survive in an environment. Uh, for example, there was an explanation about the beak of woodpecker. It is strong to carve out a home in, in, a, in a tree. So this helps the woodpecker survive in the environment. There are also uh, physiological adaptations. Here the professor mentions uh, the venom of snake or mammal's milk secretion. Uh, basically, these are internal biological mechanisms. The, the physiolog physiological adaptations are the biological mechanisms. And then there are behavioral adaptations, where you change the behavior in order to survive. And here he gave the example of reptiles, how they lay a lot of eggs. You will listen to a lecture about an academic topic. After, you will get a question about what you heard. You will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it. Now listen to the lecture. When we are talking about nonverbal communication, we are referring to body movements, eye contact, gestures, voice, touch, control of space, through which we are communicating our intentions and attitudes. People are often unaware of their body language. But is it important for us to know what our body is saying or screaming to the world? It most certainly is. There are ways in which you can improve your vocabulary in this areas. Like we mentioned, gestures are part of the nonverbal communication. We often wave our arms about, not thinking about it as we do. Making calm and clear gestures is an indication of a confident person who is free from anxiety. Posture is also really important. By having a straight back and having an open stance, we convey that we are not afraid and that we are confident. What we mean by open stance is that your arms are not in front of your torso. When they are, this is a defensive stance. You are indicating that you are afraid of an attack. Eye contact is among the most intimate forms of communication. Since humans rely so much on the visual aspects, we are especially sensitive about our eyes. They can communicate affection for somebody when we give someone a soft glance. Or they can show hostility if we intensely look into somebody's eyes, waiting for the other person to look away first. We assert our dominance in a relationship with somebody this way. No matter what we are doing in life, whether it is trying to make a love interest fall for us, or trying to get that new promotion, we need to be aware of how we carry ourselves. What we say can be of little importance if our body language is saying something different. The amount of success we get in life can be greatly determined by this.
what does the professor say about nonverbal communication, and in which ways do we do it? Include points and examples from the lecture. Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. The professor says that we are often unaware of our nonverbal communication, but, it, but that it's important. Uh, and we basically communicate with our gestures, with our posture and eye contact. Uh, for example, calm gestures indicate uh, confidence. Uh, when he mentioned posture, he said that a straight back and having our arms not cover the torso is also a sign of confidence uh, because when our arms cover the torso, that means that we are defensive, basically that we are not confident. And he also mentioned eye contact, basically because we rely so much on our eyes, uh, we are sensitive about them and we can show affection and hostility with our eye contact. Basically, if we look at somebody affectionately, that means that we care about this person and we can also assert our dominance by constantly looking into somebody's eyes and not looking away.